coming to you live from the nation's capital here in Studio 3. This is the Wednesday live edition of Business Today with me, Erika Nawinda. It's always a pleasure being in your company. Now, in the program tonight, we will bring you the market insight focusing on the impact of recent amendments to property legislation, the interest rate cycle, and the property market outlook in Namibia. Now, that's Business Today in a moment. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Now, as earlier indicated, tonight we will focus on the property market looking at the impact of the recent amendments to property legislation, interest rate cycle and property market outlook in Namibia, as well as the outlook for property as well as investment class. Now, to unpack this, I am joined that is by Bernard Minar, the Managing Director of Namibia. Good evening and welcome to Business Today. Evening, Erica. It's All a pleasure right. to be here and thank you for having me. All right. It's good to have you. Uh, that is with you. Um, I mean, it's Good to have you with us here in studio this <laughs> evening. All right, to start off the interview, just give us an overview of the legislative. So, Erica, there was a change that was implemented on the 1st of October mm -hmm. 2024 that updated our um, Transfer Deeds Act, of um, which was, I think the previous version was 1993, so it was quite old. Mm -hmm. um, the, the two implications of this update in the, in the legislative framework made that or stated that property transactions would now be more transparent, especially for those in, uh, registered in CCs. Mm -hmm. And then the second aspect was just updating the, the categories of which, uh, which property values attract what percentage of transfer duties um, as a tax to, to, to government. Um, as well as introducing uh, a high categ higher category that is almost super taxed in, in its transfers, but that's specifically uh, for residential property. All right. Now, what are some of the impacts uh, of this amendment that is when it comes to property market? Okay, so the, two, the impact is also twofold, as I had briefly mentioned now. The mm -hmm. first one was um, there used to be, a, I would almost call it a loophole, where um, property purchases were registered or properties were registered in CCs or mm -hmm. trusts and in PTYs, in companies, um, and for residential properties registered in those entities, mm -hmm. uh, they, they are no longer um, free or exempt from uh, transfer duties. So they are now going to be more transparently recorded in the, the deeds office mm -hmm. and are going to attract transfer duties. So it makes it, you know, it, the, ben the benefit of those transactions being in, in CCs and, and entities um, are no longer as beneficial. So that's the one. The second one is um, where the, the, the value of properties that do not attract transfer duties um, was increased to over a million, up from 600,000. Mm -hmm. And the other classes of values are also updated accordingly. As I said, the, the last category was introduction of 11% transfer duty on, pro on properties over 12.1 million. So that is quite a significant, uh, I would almost say, tax that you have to pay to, to acquire those properties. And it's trying to make affordability at the lower ends, mm -hmm. um, to stretch affordability at the lower ends, as well as recovering some, some additional revenue for government from the higher end transactions. All right. Now, we do know that consumers have been taking, that is, of course, the sigh of relief that is in the recent month, uh, to be specific, last month, when that is the interest rates were cut. Um, does this show a sign that is of a uh, downward trend when it comes to the interest uh, interest rates, or uh, will this excitement actually just uh, be, be, be short-lived, if okay. I may put it that way? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I'm not an economist. I, hear you. I, 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 cannot, I cannot crystal ball gaze and see what's going to happen in right. the future. But right. we do have some colleagues who try and specialize in that area. Mm -hmm. And I've consulted with them. And also, um, to a large degree, our economy follows the South African cycle. So, because we're quite closely re linked to mm -hmm. the South African economy. Now, mm -hmm. in this year already, we saw two downward shifts of 0.25% or 25 basis points each. Mm -hmm. Um, amounting to a half a percent decline in the second part of this year. Um, and we expect to, to see up to another 0.75, so up to three quarters of a percent decrease, mm -hmm. possibly, over the next, say, year to year and a half. All right. Now, how is this likely to uh, affect that is borrowers and, and, and households that have been actually uh, under, 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 under spending pressure? Yes. So, 
the high interest rate cycle that we were in was a recovery from the very low uh, interest rates we had during the COVID period. Mm -hmm. So um, the, it was trying to, to bring relief initially to the economy. And then when overspending started happening, the government, uh, the central bank also increased uh, interest rates to its highest point in quite a few years. Mm -hmm. Now, that did affect affordability of a lot of your residential property owners um, and often resulted in, in, in foreclosure by banks, um, which is also the last thing that we'd want to consider because you don't want to see default on loans. Um, and this interest rate cuts up to now um, have seen quite a bit of benefit. And if we go up to the 1.25% reduction from its peak, mm -hmm. you know, it can, it can realize savings of almost 8% on your monthly installment, which is a significant uh, contribution back to your to cash flow of a family where salaries have been marginally increased over the last four years. All right. Now, um, let's shift our focus to gradual t uh, transition. Um, you did mention financing becoming more f uh, affordable, if I may put it that way. Uh, that is, uh, uh, when it comes to rental uh, demand to ownership in specific market segments. What does actually what does this gradual transition actually mean? Okay, so when the with a high interest rate cycle, and that was off the back of before that it was COVID, mm -hmm. and just before that we had a downturn in the economy. Um, from about 2016. Mm -hmm. And up to that point, with the, this, this whole downward trend we experienced mm -hmm. stopped development of residential or, or limited development of residential property mm -hmm. in general in the bigger urban areas. And as the population grew, people didn't have opportunity to buy property anymore. So, and also driven by affordability, they opted for rental properties. Now, as demand increases for a commodity, so mm -hmm. people want to rent a property, there are no four people wanting to rent it, so the owner is able to hike up prices to a certain extent to over the longer period of time, obviously not shorter periods, yeah. um, to, to compensate them for the extra demand that there is and to, to, to manage the, the free economy, I could almost say, of that investment that they are invested in. Now with the reduction in the interest rates, mm -hmm. um, occupants of those higher rental properties can now start considering to actually buy a property. property yeah. um, it might not be in the same area, it might not be exactly the same affordability levels, mm -hmm. but it's definitely an option for many people. And uh, that can also that then shift the, the scales away from from rental demand to, to purchase and acquisition demand, yes. All right, um, let's, let's, let's uh, talk about uh, not just young people, but we've seen mm. that most people actually, when it comes to our country, or talking about uh, uh, that is um, uh, issues here at home, rental issues and property issues here at home, most of them are renting, uh, and not just young people, that are, like I did mention. And, mm. uh, perhaps what advice would you give uh, when it comes to, 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 to buying property and, and, and renting? Okay. So rental in general tends to be more affordable in the short term mm -hmm. um, compared to ownership of a certain, say, two-bedroom or three-bedroom unit in a certain area. Um, the, the downside of that is that as time passes, so over the longer period of time, your rent will continue to increase and continue right. to increase, mm -hmm. at least by inflation. Whereas if you buy property, it might be more expensive in the shorter term mm -hmm. because your installment is going to be higher. But as you move through the maturing of that loan, so five years down the line and 10 years down the line, your installment wouldn't have grown as much as uh, a rental Pimping increase rent. would, yeah. have, would have. So, mm -hmm. so in the end, you end up capping your expense over the long term instead of going for this route where your rent just keeps increasing, increasing over time. All right. Now, how would you describe the current situation when it comes to property marketers, prospective uh, homeowners are pondering that is on seizing the opportunity uh, to enter the market? You know, yes, I, I think I view it as a long-term savings account. So it is going to entering the property market as, mm -hmm. uh, as an owner instead of a, of a tenant, mm -hmm. um, I think would be in the same area where you're living or renting a property, it would be more expensive. 
uh, but as soon as you see the benefit of paying off that loan over the long term, you, it's, it is debt, but it's good debt. It's productive debt. Mm -hmm. um, so in the long term, once this property is paid off, you have an asset, yeah. and that asset cannot be taken away. Right. Whereas if you stop paying your rent, you just don't have a place to live anymore. Yeah. So once you get to a point where this property is paid off, mm -hmm. you've created wealth for, for your yourself. for your fa for yourself yeah. and for your family mm -hmm. and something that can grow your portfolio into the future and have something for your kids one day as well right um uh, we will take a short break and this conversation will definitely continue definitely thank you all right now if you are just uh, joining us here on business today this is the midweek edition and tonight we are focusing on property market looking that is at uh, the emphasis on recent amendments to property legislation interest rate cycle and property market outlook in Namibia as well as the outlook for property as an investment class. Now that discussion continues in a moment to stay with us. Welcome back. We will continue. That is with our discussion here in the studio with Bernard Minar, the Managing Director of Nami Bhabua, focusing on the property market insight. Now, uh, to continue this conversation, um, uh, let's touch on the current homeowners or the issue that is of current homeowners that are willing to actually sell their properties but yet are hesitant uh, as the value of the property has gone down. What causes uh, that is, uh, of course, uh, this issue and when do we expect things to actually get better? Erica, yes. So, to to consider selling the property, um, we are in a position now where, given the peak in the property cycle of mid, early to mid 2016, mm -hmm. um, properties in certain areas have devalued. So, you had a property that may have been worth two million mm -hmm. and is now effectively worth 1.8. Argument's sake. Um, and if you are wanting to sell, obviously you need to carefully consider doing that. The reason being that if you want to sell to exit the market, mm -hmm. then you are forfeiting the opportunity of this capital growth and this wealth creation opportunity that you have. Um, the decision is also, you know, should, the, the consideration you should have also mm -hmm. is that if you want to sell your property that might be worth less now, Keep in mind that if you're looking to buy another one, mm -hmm. that would also have gone through the same cycle. So effectively, mm. you aren't losing because um, the whole area is, or, or in general, the, the whole market has been depressed. Mm -hmm. um, I would, obviously, from, from my point of view, I would be very hesitant to do so um, because I I am a keen believer of that when you when you buy property, you buy for the long haul and you shouldn't make long-term decisions based on short-term needs. Um, and to, to grow your, your family's potential wealth and, and legacy moving forward and what you might leave for your kids and how you might be supported in your old age um, is, is a vital decision to, to consider when you actually want to sell the property. Um, but yes, the market correction where we are now, properties are valued less you would have paid off a lot of your bonds. So mm -hmm. as long as you make sure that you, when you do sell the property, it is not below the value of the debt that you had in place and make sure that, you know, in the long term, you do not sacrifice um, you, or you do not sacrifice for any long term benefits for short term needs. All right. Perhaps while we are at it, uh, just take us through the advice that you just mentioned now that is for, for those two kind of people, one trying to sell and one trying to buy property, mm. seeing uh, or looking at the current property conditions. So to looking at the seller, mm -hmm. my, my personal view is, and it's something I, I actually picked up from a mentor uh, very early on in my career. Mm -hmm. Um, and this individual said that in the property sector, buy when everybody else is buying and never sell. Don't sell when everybody else is selling, mm -hmm. never sell. So that's an ideal situation, obviously, um, because for property, you only, as an investment that you're making, you only make money based on the price that you're paying for a property. Um, so if you paid a very good price, mm -hmm 
then the market would dictate where it's going to. If you pay too much, then obviously you'd be less inclined to be able to make a profit in the long term of it. Right. So, so with that, you know, if you're considering selling, I would be very hesitant and carefully consider. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it does, it's not always possible. We don't live in utopia and, and we have to make sacrifices. But in the very least, when you do sell, try and not exit the market. Rather buy something else where you can renovate, upgrade and unlock more value for yourself. When it gets to the individual who's looking to buy, mm -hmm. yes, property values dec decreased over the last eight years. Um, and with that decrease, we have seen a lot of um, people not willing to take that risk because the market is going down. At the moment, I think we are at the bottom or very close to the bottom of that cycle mm -hmm. with interest rates going down, with the changes in the legislation making it more affordable to buy because we're looking at two things, the cost of acquisition mm -hmm. and the cost of ownership. So paying off your mortgage versus the registration costs. And with both now being addressed, mm -hmm with the prospects of the oil and gas in the future and our energy economy on, on, the, on, on the verge of, of being unlocked, I think uh, I, would, I would seriously make that consideration. However, I would like to veto this. You shouldn't make these long-term decisions based on short-term interest rate periods. So we might be entering into a low cycle now. Mm -hmm. You need to keep in mind that if your affordability two years down the line would still be the same if interest rates were to go up. So you need to plan for a worse situation. So plan for the worst, hope for the best, and make sure that you, you don't enter into a transaction where you are not aware of the impacts thereof. All right. Now let's talk about the combination of the transfer duty amendments and the interest rate shift that is expected to impact property values. Uh, what, what, how is this likely to play out uh, with uh, looking at the impact property values differently across uh, that is the, the different market segments? The market segments. Yeah. So we specifically talking now about residential property, mm -hmm. I think, and, then, and that's where um, the bulk of our value and, and, and the interest lies, not so much the commercial and industrial. Mm -hmm. Um, but for and, and that's what the Act mostly focuses on. Mm -hmm. So the Act now states that where you had residential property registered in uh, an entity, mm -hmm. CC Trust Company, um, those costs are now um, taxable. You have to pay transfer duties on those transactions. So they're more transparent, so it's easier to get valuations of properties. The reason people had put these properties into those vehicles was to avoid the transfer duties. Now, what I foresee happening is that you have a lot of properties in CCs and people having to pay annual duties, uh, submit tax returns for those CCs, have all the accounting aspects dealt with by uh, um, um, accountants so that everything can be compliant from, uh, from an income tax point of view. Mm -hmm. And these, all these things cost money. So. I anticipate that people would now shift away from um, buying the CCs or, or companies that own these residential properties and to actually just buying the properties in their own name. So if it's jointly between husbands and wives, um, you can buy you know, 50 50 percent. Or if it's an individual buying the whole thing, obviously they buy it in their own name. So there are a lot of transactions I foresee that will not stay in CCs. Um, the, the, there's a the introduction of the super tax. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that's going to curb speculation quite a bit. So, so there used to be quite a, um, a, there used to be a limit on, on the tax of the upper properties, I think it was 8%. Mm -hmm. Now they introduced an 11% category, which um, adds almost 50% to the cost, if I can put it like that. So just thumb sucking. So speculative activity in the super rich or the super wealthy class mm -hmm. is is going to turn down i think because people would have to unlock a lot more value to be able to recover that cost of registration right. so so that that area i think speculation will go down but from uh the lower segments the lower cost low interest rates um there there's there's an opportunity for a lot more people to, to enter the market and for demand to grow and as demand grows 
new properties will be developed and you'll see that there would be growth in, in the lower segments. All right. Now let's shift our focus to foreign investment. We do, we want to believe Namibia is actually at a stable pace right now and it, it is definitely attractive for foreign investment. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is your take on that? So, comparatively, mm -hmm. we are very stable from a political point of view. Uh, our, our, our country's political system, our democracy has been very stable. Mm -hmm. um, our fiscal policy has been rigorous um, and it's a safe country. Uh, I, I, I like to think back where um, uh, it was almost a decade ago where somebody also mentioned to me where they said, you know, if something happens in the Western world, it would take 20 years for it to happen in, in Namibia. Namibia. Yeah. So, you know, relatively we are safe. People, some people view it as behind the curve, behind the time, but I think we can see the ups and downs and fluctuations about what happens in the world. Mm. And as things calm down, they, you know, we, we start feeling it in our economy. Mm. Same like COVID. We've almost felt it a year after it actually happened. So um, the, the stable economy, the stable political landscape mm. and the prospect of growth of the, of the energy economy um, have seen that uh, there's, there's much more focus on Namibia globally. Um, also, you need to view it in comparison with others. So mm -hmm. I've seen how a lot of European um, retirees actually exit Europe and um, actually buy property in Namibia to come retire here. Um, and it's just because of the fact uh, globally our affordability levels are very competitive. Um, our, as I said, economy is stable, mm -hmm. political landscape is stable, and we are relatively safe. All right. Perhaps just staying with energy economy, uh, uh, let's, 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 uh, seeing that the country is actually busy strengthening that it's, its position um, as a regional hub for energy and sustainability or rather sustainable development, um, talk to us about the advantages of this opportunity to boost uh, or rather when it comes to property marketing. So the the, the economy, I, I believe, mm -hmm. the, the energy economy, so is going to be limited in the amount of people that will enter into the market. Now, your, your property market is governed mostly by two aspects. The first is, are there people? Mm -hmm. So people need places to live and yeah. that's what drives the property market. Don't mm -hmm. invest in property where there's not people to live in them. True. And the, the second aspect is affordability. Now, for us to be able to grow the property market, we have to address both those aspects. So we need to make sure that we protect the market or we grow the markets where the people are, oh, yeah. um, unless we need to migrate the people internally in the country from certain areas to where the energy, you know, where, where the prospective business is going to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't, I don't foresee a lot of people coming in because the oil will probably be, they'd be mined off, offshore. Uh, there'd be a lot of funds flowing through tax revenue to the government, but not a lot of feet on the ground um, for maintenance of ships, etc., etc. They would be isolated hotspots. Um, and if you're looking at the, um, at the green hydrogen prospects, mm -hmm. uh, it's a maximum of possibly 3,000 other figures that I'm hearing, uh, jobs that are being created. So, you know, on, on, a, on a national scale, it's not a lot, but we need to make sure that we prepare our, 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 um, our market for where the benefits can be downstream. So a lot, more, a lot more, hopefully, money in the pockets of Namibians through the tax revenue that the government is actually acquiring mm -hmm. and making sure that we grow tertiary industries. So where those additional funds are happening, we're going to have cheap electricity, more mm -hmm. money in the market. We develop... Um, infrastructure in the areas where, or, or businesses in the areas where, where the people are located mm -hmm. and the resources are. All right. Now, in conclusion, I am uh, seeing that, or rather, we all are seeing that the Namibia's uh, the property market is actually uh, entering that is a recovery phase, uh, bolstered that, that is, of course, by reduced interest uh, rates, as mentioned earlier, and selective legislation adjustments that is for favor, uh, 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 um, favoring affordable housing, mm. as mentioned earlier, and of course, um, uh, uh, so much more. But what policy interventions do you think are needed that is to sustain this uh, recovery phase? 
So, my my anticipation is that once again, mm. I'm I'm not a politician. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't write laws. Right. I don't know how to do. But yeah. I foresee that we that there's going to be a need for mm. um, for very for a lot of specialist skills to happen in Namibia, right. and for us to be able to sustain our our current to to unlock the value that mm. of of what's on the horizon because there's a there, there's an expectation that there's a big growth on the horizon of of, of our country mm. for us to unlock that it might be a consideration once again mm. i don't i don't do policy very well mm -hmm. um to to make it easier to for for those skills to come in quicker into the country right so perhaps immigration uh, adjustments to immigration policy to allow skills to come in and allow local talent to be upskilled much quicker so that we can get that development faster instead of trying to find our way as to what the best circumstances are. So when, when those skills are, are, are implanted locally, if I can put it like that, mm -hmm. um, you'd, you'd find that there's a lot more job opportunities for our locals. There are a lot more income and as I said, property is driven by uh, also bums and beds mm -hmm. and cash in the bank. So, so being able to afford property and being in areas where the people are located um, are the two main drivers. And if we're able to unlock mm -hmm. skills and upskill ourselves and develop tertiary sectors, we'll definitely be able to, to um, leverage the returns that are anticipated. Right. Mr. Mina, any final remarks before we let you go? Um, I, I'm happy to see that there's a focus on the affordability level of, of of our property um, it's it's traditionally been for the for the um, fortunate few mm -hmm. to live in a house that they actually own so rental has been the has been a must for many families um, just because of affordability you right. can't find a two or three bedroom house mm -hmm. at, a, at a, an affordability level to buy rather than so, so I'm glad to see that there is um, prospects on the horizon of, 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 of government looking out for the affordability for mm -hmm. the affordable part of the segment and then you know where the revenue that they're losing there that they're actually collecting on the other side of the of the very expensive property yeah. so I'm, I'm really good to see I'm really happy to see that there's that focus and mm -hmm. I'd um, like to see a lot more initiatives um, because we have a very stable legal framework to enable development in the affordable and um, I would almost call it the ultra affordable sectors mm -hmm. um, to see this grow to a point where we can address the housing shortage in Namibia. All right. Well, thank you so much for making time for us here on NBC, I mean on NBC of course, and uh, on our show business today. Uh, it was indeed a very informative and educative interview. Thank you so very much for having me, Erica, and I, I enjoy actually having a conversation with you. All right. Now, that was Bernard Minar, the Managing Director of Namibu, discussing at length the property market amendments to property legislation. He also touched that is on the interest rate cycle and property market outlook in Namibia, as well as the outlook for property as an investment class. That also concludes tonight's edition of Business Today. To catch us again on Friday as we bring you more news affecting the economy and, of course, your pocket from me, Erica Nawinda, and the rest of the crew here in Studio 3. It's good night.